great. Hey folks, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another Tiblio After Hours Market Recap. My name is Lee, one of the founders of Tiblio, and in these market recaps, we go over the stock market, your questions, Tiblio, uh, and basically anything stock market related. So again, happy to be with you today. A warm welcome to all of our returning Tiblio subscribers. A special welcome to any new subscribers. So let's hop into it. Uh, first, let me just make sure everyone on Discord knows we're here. All right, the message has gone out. Okay, wonderful. Okay, great. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. It is a little rainy and hot outside, so uh, stay safe out there. Hey, Triumph, hope you're doing well. So we had an interesting day in the stock market. Also, to that end, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat and or the comments of this video so that I can either answer them now in real time or we could talk about it uh, in tomorrow's or the next day's live. But uh, yeah, good afternoon, Triumph Now. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Kaiser, Kaiser Zose, welcome, welcome. Good afternoon. Kaiser Zose, that sounds familiar. I forget where that's from. Nonetheless, uh, let's, let's hop into it. So again, an interesting day in the market. Uh, SPY opened up, or SPY opened up lower. So again, we go over SPY as our barometer, as our kind of metric for how the market is doing or, or did. SPY opened up at 428, uh, which was lower than when it closed uh, the previous day. And so given that, uh, when the stock market drops like that, like it did today, we see a lot of volatility in the market. So stock market drops, a lot of volatility, uh, which presents a lot of good option selling opportunities for folks. So that was interesting. So like I talked about before, um, I will start to sell call credit spreads when I see SPY have at least two consecutive either flat or down days. Um, this is what we call sometimes a, a pivot. So stock is pivoting uh, from hitting all time highs. Um, so today was day one. So we'll see how tomorrow and Monday works out. Uh, so we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, Triumph asks, uh, did you get the cover Nike yesterday? No, I no, I did not cover Nike yesterday. Is Nike? I saw that Nike was rocking and rolling, but um, I did not cover Nike. But we can go over it. Nike is an interesting uh, stock. Um, Harris Love, how does Theta Decay as a day goes on, or is it applied at open or close? Oh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, Harris, uh, we will go over that. Hey, LD, hope you're doing well. LD, good to see you. Glad you're here. Okay, so uh, let's actually re let's actually uh, replace GME for Nike. A lot of people have um, AMC over GME. Uh, one stock of note, though, is Space S P C E. So today it was up seventeen percent. 17%. And as a reminder, uh, there's a space launch on July 11th. Yesterday, the implied volatility was around 150. Today, after hours, the market volatility is up over 200%. So yesterday, we said, hey, if the volatility is over 200 for space, uh, this is going to be uh, some pretty interesting uh, naked puts here. And again, to be clear, um, my goal for space is to sell, sell naked puts. So when I, when you sell a put, it is a, it's a, it's a neutral to bear to bullish place or neutral to bullish. And so we're saying, I'm going to sell a put. I expect space to go up. If it does, great. I, I keep the credit. Wonderful. If it goes down, then I buy a hundred shares of space because of this event that's about to happen. I will be okay with selling, um, with with owning 100 shares of space. So because the volatility is so high, right, 200% is relatively high, um, we, will, we will get a lot of money for these naked puts because as we talk about, when volatility increases, option prices increase. And so the more money we can get for a naked put, the better. So we're going to keep an eye on this tomorrow see, to see what's, see what's going on. 
Okay, so let's talk about AMC. So for those that are in AMC, um, you know, every time we talk about AMC, um, I love when everyone lists how how low they got in on AMC um, to to show off how smart they are, which is wonderful. I wish I got on on AMC at at fifty cents. Wasn't that smart or fast enough? But for folks who are in AMC, again, we want you we want you to make as much money as possible. AMC was down today. Uh, opened up at 40, had a low of 38. I actually thought about selling some call, some uh, put credit spreads on AMC expiring uh, today. And so the reason being, well, let's talk about that. So AMC uh, opened up pretty low. It was dropping pretty hard. It had a low of $38 uh, for the day. And so my thought was, okay, I had a low 38. It's starting to rebound a little bit. And then it started to pick up a lot of steam. So if I were to sell a, uh, a put credit spread expiring tomorrow, I could take advantage of, one, the stock dropping. So then the volatility for those puts increase. And then, two, since the stock is taking off, there's a lot of momentum. Uh, you know, people start buying AMC once it starts dropping. So I went in on the option chain and looked to see how much I could get for selling a put credit spread for Friday. I wasn't able to get enough credit that made sense for me. Uh, so I, I did not take that trade. Did not take that. If you want to play AMC and you don't want to buy shares or you don't want to buy options, put credit spreads can be a good uh, a good option for you. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Nike per I Thomas request. Uh, let's see here. Is my, is this is the stream choppy? Can you guys hear me and see me okay? Uh, I hope the stream isn't cutting out. Can you guys hear me? Check, check, check. Mic check. Okay, it looks like I'm having some latency issues. I hope it isn't uh, affecting the stream. Okay, so people cut out, but I'm back. Okay. All right. Okay, looks like... Oh, gee, Louise. Okay, I'm good now. Looks like I got that uh, taco... Bell, Taco Bell Wi-Fi connection. All right, anyways, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, so my, my internet does this often. Okay, I'll have, I'll have to get this, this, uh, this Wi-Fi figured out, folks. Um, nonetheless, let's see here. So there was a question by Triumph. Can you give, so let me answer uh, Barron's question or Harris question, how does theta decay as a day goes on work? Yeah, so theta, theta decay happens uh, throughout, throughout the day, essentially. So it doesn't just happen um, at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day. If you notice when you buy an option, throughout the day, your option will slowly, especially as you get closer to expiration, your option will slowly start to lose money, especially if you are out of the money. And so data decay takes place, you know, we'll just call it hour by hour, minute by minute. And so there's actually a value called theta that you can check to see um, how, how much money you are losing. Um, nonetheless, uh, it doesn't take place at the open or close. It takes place uh, throughout the day. So something to keep in mind. Um, Triumph, can you give an example of selling puts like the full play beginning to end on space if you're not, if you got time? Yeah, so again, for for space, uh, we'll talk about that. So for space specifically, uh, when we sell a put, and let me go to the option chain for space. When we sell a put, the idea, so there's, so for me at least, the idea is to, bring in premium 
to take advantage of this of this event. And so again, the event is a launch taking place on July 11th. Or earnings, right? Earnings is another big event that which where premium uh, comes in at a, you know premium starts to um, become very profitable. Or there's a lot of premium on earnings. Nonetheless, when you sell a put, what happens is you sell the put. And by selling put, that means someone on the other side buys your put. And so in this example, uh, I would bring in $600, $605 for this put. So my account is credited $605 if I sell the 50 strike put. Great. That's amazing. Okay. Now, if space stays above $50 on expiration for uh, next July 16th, uh, I you know I keep the six hundred and five dollars. Wonderful. If space goes below fifty dollars, then I'm obligated to buy a hundred shares of space at fifty dollars. So that's five thousand dollars. I keep the credit. So that actually brings down the cost basis of of a hundred shares. And then at that time, once I have a hundred shares of space, then I do what's called I will I will sell a covered call. Uh, the following week or, you know, 30 days out. And so I'll keep doing this, and this is called the the will strategy. So that's the play from beginning to end. And again, I'm selling the naked put on space because I want to take advantage of all of the premium that's happening because of the big event. And so we could sell a, uh, a put credit spread to take advantage of the premium. We could also do a call credit spread or an iron condor. I mean, there's a lot of plays we could do. Um, I'm just doing the the naked put on this particular play. Whew, I hope that answered your question. Um, I triumph. Um, Adam Adam G Adam G Productions. When it comes to options, is the open interest the most important or volume? Yeah. So they're they're both they're both important. They both show different things. So the volume just talks about the transactions that happen for a given day. Open interest uh, has open interest displays how many people actually hold a given a given contract at a given time. So if you see a lot of open interest, a lot of people, a lot of institutions have uh, at least one contract for that given um, for the given strike. The volume is actual uh, exchanging of those of those contracts. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, yeah, folks, hey, if you don't mind, please uh, hit the like button. Much appreciated. Uh, Kevin and I, you know, try to give as much value as possible. So if you wouldn't mind just hitting the like button, do us a quick favor. Much appreciated. Nonetheless, so we did the market recap. We talked about uh, space, right? So we're going to look at space tomorrow. Um, AMC looks like it's wavering a little bit so again if you are in amc uh, if you are in amc please be careful also if we want to talk if you want to play amc and you don't want to buy calls you don't want to buy shares take a look at call or put credit spreads so let's talk about nike so when we uh when we sold the nike iron condor we sold the 140, one, the 140, 141 call credit spread. Nike is at $160 right now. So given that uh, Nike has uh, gone so high, let's actually just do a quick search to see if anything crazy is going on. Okay. So Nike has had this crazy spaceship type rise over the past uh, over the past week or so. Because of this, right, a couple things could happen. Again, if we want to play Nike, uh, perhaps we could actually buy. We could buy shares. Let's see, so let's look at the expiration for next Friday. So the implied volatility on Nike. Is relatively low. Again, it's important to compare implied volatility with 
historical implied volatility of a similar stock. But we just saw space had implied volatility of uh, 200%. Okay, and space was trading at $50, $55. Nike is trading at $160, and its implied volatility is around 20%. So given that, the option prices are uh, deflated. So if we sold a naked put, we wouldn't get that much money uh, just because the implied vol is down. Um, in these situations, sometimes it's best to either buy the stock if we're interested in, you know, in Nike, or because option prices are relatively cheap, we could actually buy a call or a put and take advantage of that. Um, additionally, if we just wanted to reduce our risk, nonetheless, um, you know, call credit spreads uh, could be an option, though. Though, right, implied volatility is down, so you will not get as much credit as you would um, otherwise. So something to, something to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind there. So again, as the market, as the market conditions change, we have to switch up our strategies uh, to get the most money uh, for a given, for a given uh, stock. Uh, Kush, hey, Kush, good to see you. What do I think about NEO? What do I think about NEO? Yeah, so Neo, 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 Neo seems to be a popular one. So, so the volatility is, you know, it's not that bad. A lot of open interest. So again, a lot of people have um, options on Neo for these particular strikes. Uh, let's look at the good old, the good old chart here for Neo. Uh, let's look at the the day chart. Okay, so Neo opened at forty three, closed at forty five. Yeah. So, hmm. So if it's a, if it's a stock that I don't follow, so I don't follow Neo extremely closely. If it were me and I was interested in Neo, I would probably consider. Um, selling either a call or put credit spread on NEO, myself at least, right? The volatility looks pretty high, at least on this next expiration. So for me, a call spread or put spread would be the, would be the option of choice. Uh, Baron Felder, Olympic hype for Nike. Yeah, so the Olympic, the Olympic hype for Nike seems to be, seems to be uh, a big deal, right? So news was out today that the Tokyo Games will not have any spectators on hand. So I don't, it didn't seem to affect the Nike stock price much. Nike was pretty much flat on the day. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. You know, Japan, they're, they're having a coronavirus surge, unfortunately. So we'll see how that affects advertising dollars, right? So, I mean, if you are, if you are bearish on Nike, meaning you think that perhaps because no one will be there, not much interest in, in, in uh, the Olympics. Perhaps coronavirus may, coronavirus may, um, may cancel, postpone the Olympics. You know, may, perhaps buying a put on Nike. If you think the Olympics could really push, um, push Nike up, implied volatility is low. So this could be a good opportunity for a call or, or put option. Yeah, Nike has had a crazy run. I think, right, I think one of the biggest uh, motivators is just that they beat earnings by a billion dollars. So uh, you can't really argue with res those results. Uh, Matt Sierra, do you put much consideration... Oh, hey, Matt. Hope you're doing well, by the way. Uh, do you put much consideration in the underlying stock financial stats when often trading? Can you briefly walk us through your typical research process? Yeah, Matt, that's a good question. Uh, that's a good question. So, I actually have news about news for you guys that we're very excited to share with everyone. So, in our Discord, uh, let me make sure you guys can see this. In our Discord, you, you've probably seen this new channel called Be Bezinga News. And so, as you know, or now you will know, uh, Benzinga is a, is a news service that really that gives us the latest breaking financial news in the market, basically uh, in, in real time. 
Benzinga Pro is a service that Benzinga has. They charge around $135 for this. We're offering this to all of our Tiblio subscribers for, again, $24.95. So we're excited to give you this because, uh, as Matt just mentioned, part of the process for figuring out which stocks to buy options, sell options, buy stocks, sell stocks on, is really having a good understanding about where the stock is in terms of its news. So we're ultra excited to offer this news. This is our first iteration of this news service. Um, we were going to start incorporating it into our morning watch, into the different screeners, so that when you see a stock, you can you know click on this news button and see all the latest news that you might not and probably won't find on a typical Google, Google search. So this will basically change the way you trade in that you'll have better insights as to what's going on with a particular stock or sector uh, before you take a trade. So very excited about it. Uh, again, this is just the first iteration. So we'll be able to get this out to you guys soon. Um, nonetheless, Matt, to answer your question, uh, so for me, the considerations that I do are the following. And let me just bring up uh, Tiblio here to kind of highlight some of this stuff. So for large cap stocks, so Apple, Adobe, um, you know, some of these other big stocks, Boeing. No, I do not look at the financial underlines for these stocks because, you know, if you are a multi-billion and in some cases, trillion dollar company, uh, your financials really aren't going to sway my decision um, in any direction. However, for any stock that I sell an option or buy an option on, I will do research to understand, okay, does this company have earnings coming out? Do they have any financial or legal issues happening? A couple weeks ago, Facebook had a big court case in the EU that was overturned that changed the, the stock price. Unfortunately, Boeing had news a couple, you know, a year or so, half ago or so about some of their airplanes. So I will I will do that. Um, on the bull squeeze and bear squeeze screener, right, because a lot of these stocks are stocks that I've never heard of before, yes, understanding what type of company, company it is, what they do, um, and if they have any big news coming out is really kind of the extent of um, the research for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the bear squeeze, bull squeeze finder, these are momentum, these are momentum uh, screeners. So uh, I'm only interested in a 30 day window at the most, right? So 30 day window, financial don't really matter. Now for long term investing, right? So for my, for my IRA, for my other financial retirement accounts, yes, financials are important. So small cap, uh, mid cap, large cap. If you fall into those buckets, then for me, yes, your financial your financials are important because I'm interested in the long, long-term play. For options and stocks, because my window is 30 days out, um, news, events, uh, you know, volume is really what's important to me for now. So whew, I hope I answered your question, Matt. A little long-winded, but I, th I think it gets the point across. Uh, can you blame me, Network? Hey, can you blame me, Network? Uh, nice name. Hope you're doing well. Can you blame me? Ask or says hello, sir. New member here. Hey, welcome. I'm glad to glad to have you. I bought a put option for New Egg after it took a massive pump yesterday, but I'm not gaining much of profit as it goes down. Thoughts? Yes, 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 yes. So a couple things. Uh, New Egg had a couple halts today because I feel like people were trying to bail out of that thing. Um, can you blame me? Which uh, which strike, which strike and uh, expiration did you get on for New Egg? That would also be helpful to know. So again, uh, just as a you know as a, as a primer, if the stock is the stock can actually fall. And if the implied volatility is not uh, increasing, then yes, your your puts or your calls, for that matter, if you bought calls, um, can can lose value. So, you know, in options, there's what's called intrinsic and extrinsic value. 
and so we want to be you know we want to be clear about which part, which which value is gaining which value is losing um, but, but knowing the uh, expiration and knowing the uh, strike is also very helpful so let me know what strike okay so you have, you bought the $25 strike 716 expiration $25 strike um, July 16th Okay, how much did you, um, can you blame me? How much did you pay for this, uh, this put? That would also be helpful to know. The implied volatility is through the roof. So there's still a lot of, uh, a lot of value there. But it, it, re it really depends on, again, the implied volatility uh, the expiration date. So you have next week. So you have some time. Uh, $195. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, if we had a chart of implied volatility, it would show that you bought this put on Newegg at the height of the implied volatility. So as the stock was coming down, implied volatility started to decrease. So right now the implied volatility is like 500%, 550%. You know, it was probably around 800, 900% when you when you bought it. So yes, it could be the case where you bought the you bought the put, implied volatility collapses or IV, IV crush, and so your options uh, can actually lose value. Now, if uh, Newegg goes below your strike, uh, you will gain some intrinsic value. But hopefully, at that point in time, uh, you know, implied volatility will prop up a little bit uh, to help out. But you know, in in short, uh, they call this IV crush. So this happens a lot after earnings, where after a huge event. So Newegg, for those that don't know, you know, Newegg has this crazy run up. A couple days ago, uh, let's look at five days. Yeah, so Newegg had this crazy run up, all the way up to seventy nine dollars. Okay, so implied volatility was probably off the charts, rocking and rolling. If we buy a put around around here, so you bought the put at twenty five. So yeah, so if you buy the if you buy the put, and implied volatility starts to, to drop. Then yes, you will uh, you will lose money. This happens a lot after earnings. This happens a lot after any big any big event happens. So, did Newegg release any news about not Meg? Newegg. Okay, so nothing pops out. So it looks like again, just in in the most simplest terms, it looks like Newegg just lost steam. When we lose steam, implied volatility drops. You know, if you're an option buyer, if you're an option seller, uh, that, that spells bad news for you. Now, uh, can you blame me? If you, if you sold an option, right, so if you sold a call credit spread or put credit spread, uh, those things would have made, value, made money because you want to sell those, you want to, you want to sell them when implied volatility is decreasing. So, uh, can you blame me, Network? Again, welcome to Tiblio. Happy to have you. Um, I hope that helped explain. Also, uh, please be sure to uh, jump in the Discord. You know, we have a lot of folks who can help out with these types of questions and such. So, Kaiser So Say movie, Unusual Suspects. Kaiser So Say. Interesting. Uh, thanks, Sir Henry. Um, yeah, for, I forgot where that was from. It sounded familiar. Uh, can you blame me? I'm new to trading, only three months in. I'll do my research on what implied volatility is. Thanks, enjoying the Discord. Hey, I'm happy to hear that. Happy to hear that. Yeah, implied volatility can be a kind of hairy subject. Um, and so, again, just in its simplest terms, when there's an unknown event, when there's a lot of excitement, option prices increase. So before earnings, uh, before this... Um, space launch on July 11th. A lot of excitement, option prices, option prices increase. 
after an event happens, after earnings, you know, Newegg um, told folks that they have all these new computer chips. After that happens, okay, excitement deflates. We have what's called implied volatility crush. If you're an option buyer, uh, you tend to lose money at that at that time. So, but yeah, um, you know, uh, look it up. It's a it's a pretty interesting concept. Yeah, Kaiser so say uh, Harris Love. I have a call credit spread. AMT expiring tomorrow. That is right over my short position. Any thoughts on how I handle it? You have a call credit spread on AMT. American Tower. Oh shucks. Uh, AMT. Uh, which, uh, what are your strikes on that? Uh, Harris Love, what are your strikes on the AMT? AMT stock. So if you have, again, a call credit spread is a, is a bearish to neutral strategy. So we want the stock to stay below our strikes 277.5 and 280 and it expires tomorrow okay so the stock is trading at 278 so it's right in between your two strikes yeah um harris what what brokerage do you use cuz that will really uh that will really kind of tell what, what will happen. So a couple of things will happen. Tomorrow you'll wake up and AMT will either be between your strikes still, it'll be completely past your strikes, or it will be below your strikes. Robinhood. Yeah, so what will happen is uh, Robinhood will probably close this trade out um, around 2 or 1 o'clock Eastern Pacific time. I don't think you'll hit max loss um, well, actually, if it expires tomorrow. So, you know, we, wanna, we want to avoid max loss, right, at, at all costs. We, we never want to see max loss, so we, we try to close our trades before that happens. When you wake up in the morning, and if AMT is, uh, is below your strikes, then at least for myself, I would probably try to uh, close it before I reach max loss. Because it's already between your strikes and it's at expiration, you may see max loss here pretty, pretty quickly. Um, can you roll it? Yeah, I mean, if you can get, uh, you can probably get some value if you try to roll this thing. Um, is a American Tower? Let's see, is there anything going on with American Tower? Yeah, so it looks like I mean, it looks like it's just some bad news, right? American Tower. I don't see anything that's going to say otherwise. If we look at the chart, AMT. Okay, so it had a bit of a run-up. So let's look at today's chart. One day. All right, so it's at, two, it's at 278 right now. Let's look at, again, let's look to see what SPY is up to. And we're looking at SPY because, so SPY is down in aftermarket. So I'm looking at SPY in aftermarket to understand, okay, if the market opens up negative tomorrow, then on the whole, a lot of stocks will probably follow suit because a lot of the large caps are in SPY. So they could be down, which means AMT could be down. So, you know, Harris, because, because you're so close, um, it's going to be interesting to see how this works out for you tomorrow. Uh, Harris Love, it ran up on me the last couple of days. I missed closing out for a nice profit. Ooh, Harris, uh, were you at 50% profit, Harris, before it ran up on you? If so, hey, remember, we got to be called, cool, and collected. We got to take those profits and get out of this thing. So... Oh my gosh, Harris, now, now you're breaking my heart. You had a profit on AMT, 
and and it went and it went against you. Oh my gosh, Harris, you're you're hurting me here. You're hurting me. Yeah, we never we never want to see this. We never want to see this. So yeah, hey, when, when we have our prophets, take him and go. Take him and go. Spy had a pretty pretty down day today, so we'll see how it works out. But yeah, finger fingers crossed. You were at 75% and it wasn't closing. Okay. Yeah, so when that when that happens, we typically you put the close and you and you kept moving. Okay, that's great. When we're at 75% and it isn't closing, a lot of times we have to do what's called walk the trade down to a price where we can get it closed, right? So again, we don't want to lose a lot of money on the trade. But at the same time, if we're at that much profit, we need to close a trade. So, Harris, you know, if you come, Harris Love, if you are in this position again, you're at that much profit and it doesn't close, hey, send us a message in Discord and say, hey, guys, my, my credit spread isn't closing, but I'm profitable. What should I do? We can help you figure out how to get out of that trade and take your profits. Right? It's, it's summertime, so we want you guys to travel and go to rest, restaurants. Well... Uh, airline tickets are pretty expensive now, so I don't know if you could do much traveling. But um, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, we ha we have uh, you know when when we're losing when we're winning on a trade and it doesn't close, we can walk it down to get out of the trade, take our profits, and uh, keep it rocking and rolling. But yeah, Harris, hey, fingers crossed that uh, AMT opens up below 275 tomorrow. 277.5, and you're profitable. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed for you. Okay, so again, uh, I like to look at the implied volatility gap screener. Again, this shows us stocks that have had the largest jump in their implied volatility. I didn't see anything interesting on here today, so I passed on this. Uh, the bear squeeze screener was of interest today. Uh, the stock market was down uh, as a whole, so these stocks are typically pretty juicy, as they say. Again, I didn't see anything um, too interesting, though on Discord, we had a lot of great alerts for the bear squeeze screener. Um, I just didn't get in on anything in time to take advantage of uh, some of these plays, uh, but I hope, I hope you guys did. Uh, and just to recap, we have earnings... Uh, coming up here. So I'm going to play the Delta earnings next. When is Delta report? Yeah, Delta reports next week. So I'm going to be uh, playing the Delta earnings. Looking forward to that one. Because I have 100 shares of Delta, I will probably do a different strategy. So I'll do what's called a, um, a strangle on Delta. And so we'll talk about what that means and how it works. And again, because I have 100 shares, uh, it's going to look a little different, but um, still cool, still cool. But yeah, folks, um, again, happy to answer all your questions. We have this great news feed here uh, that we're going to be improving over the next couple weeks, so take advantage of that. Uh, this news feed has all the latest and breaking news for all stocks. We also have, um, they also have sweeps. So I know a lot of people have asked about um, call sweeps, put sweeps. We have that information in here. It also has a lot of information on SPACs, so S-P-A-C. So excited to get that to you pretty soon. Um, can you blame me? Is Tiblio your company? If so, will we be able to buy shares in Tiblio one day? Yeah, um, so um, can you blame me? Welcome. So my name is Lee. I'm one of the founders of Tiblio. My partner, Kevin, he is the other founder. So yes, this is our company. The second one, will you be able to buy shares in Tiblio one day? Uh, that is a very interesting question. Um, yeah, so I guess if we go public, then yes, you will be able to buy shares in Tiblio one day. Uh, we will see. We will see. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll keep, you, I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted on that. But yeah, this is our company. Uh, we absolutely love it. We love it because we can come to you guys, give you guys the best data, the best news, 
try to be as transparent as possible about how all this stuff works and give it to you at a price that makes sense. So we want you guys to be profitable, right? Everybody works a job. We don't want you to be a slave to your job. Sell credit spreads, sell like it puts, make a lot of money. Um, but, right, at a price point, that's not going to break the bank. So we want you to be profitable, but also be able to use a service uh, without taking too much of your profits. And, uh, yeah, be happy. So, yeah, folks, um, that's pretty much it. Thank you for joining uh, today. Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, I will definitely uh, answer them. LD says um, that would be cool, full on bull. Hey, if, if that, hey, if we go public and there's a, a bull run, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, please put them in the chat or put them in the comments so that after the video happens, I can look over the comments and uh, answer those questions tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, obviously, so. Volume will probably be pretty low, but an interesting trading day nonetheless. Um, again, out of the news, um, if you are a monthly member and want to get two free months off, when you sign up for the yearly plan, you'll get two free months off, so take advantage of that. Um, as well, please join us in the Discord. Any questions that you have about any of this stuff, stocks, options, Tiblio, myself, Kevin, and or our great uh, moderator, Steve, will answer them and help you out for them. But until then, um, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, much appreciated. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow, and good luck. Um, Harris Love, fingers crossed that that credit spread works out for you. Other than that, uh, be safe. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Bye.